To make little coconut tarts or Bakewell tarts, what I have is 100 grams of short crust pastry and this needs to be rolled out. So as usual with short crust pastry, I'm just rolling once away from me and turning the pastry round each time that I roll to make sure that my pastry is not sticking. If you do this, it helps to give you a nice round pastry, providing you start off with a round straight away. And you also notice quite quickly if your pastry is starting to stick to the worktop. If you cannot move it after a rolling, you need to lift it up and put some more flour underneath it or scoop some of the flour off your worktop underneath the pastry. Because these are small individual uh, Bakewell or coconut tarts, I don't need to worry about what shape this pastry ends up. All that matters is that I don't have it too thick when I've finished rolling. So that should give me a nice thin pastry for the tarts. With your baking tray, the way that you can tell if your cutter is going to be big enough for the tray, that one just fits inside or comes to the edge of the hole that's in the tray. That would mean that would be perfect for a lid if I was going to do something like a mince pie. But if I cut one of those to show you, if I put that into the tin, it's actually a little bit small. I've got a slightly larger cutter here, which is just bigger than the size of the tin. If I cut that one and put that into the tin, that one comes up the sides of the tin. So this is the one where the cutter just was the size of the tin. This one was a little bit bigger. And because I'm doing Bakewells, that would be fine if I wanted to do jam tarts. This would be better if I wanted to do mince pies or the Bakewell or coconut tarts that I want to do because I've got to have a, a layer of jam in the bottom and then a filling on the top. And what I don't want to happen is for the filling to bubble over the edge of the pastry as it could quite easily there and stick to the tin. So I'm going to use the slightly larger cutters and finish cutting my pastry shapes. Now, two, three, four, five, Six. So I would have got seven of these from the first rolling of pastry and I'm going to re-roll this and just make a couple more. So there we go. In fact, I would have got eight. So I have eight circles to start with. And because this is short crust, I can scrunch this up and finish rolling this pastry. Okay, so I've got my pastries rolled out and I've lined the bun tray. In here, I've just got some strawberry jam and I could put it like that into the case, but when you put the cake mix on the top, sometimes the jam doesn't melt, so if you just stir this jam a little bit, what happens is your jam goes nice and runny, and that makes it a little bit easier to then put a little bit of jam in the bottom of each of your pastry cases. So just a little bit of jam, you only need at most a teaspoonful. If you put too much in it becomes quite difficult to seal the edge and stop the jam from bubbling up the side of your cake mixture. 
So just about half a teaspoonful of jam in each cake case, and that's the very small one there that I did. So I know which is the smallest of these, but you can see just a little bit of jam in the bottom, and if you've stirred it up, it will run a little bit and spread itself over the bottom of your pastry case. And to make the cake topping for the little mini bake wells, what I have is uh, 60 grams of caster sugar and 60 grams of butter with a half a teaspoon of vanilla paste. I've got one egg and 60 grams of self-raising flour ready. So I'm just going to mix the butter and the sugar together with an electric mixer until it's soft and fluffy. <laughs> Okay, having creamed the butter and sugar together and mixed that well and got some air in, I'm just going to add one egg to my bowl and I'm going to use the electric mixer again to whisk this through until the mixture is even. Okay, I've started mixing in my egg but I can see in the bowl that I have butter and sugar around the outside that has not been incorporated into the egg. It's got no egg in it and at the moment it looks a little bit lumpy. So I've just used a spatula to go around the outside of the bowl and now I'm going to mix again. <laughs> The mixture is now soft and it looks more even in texture and in colour. I can't see any lumps of the butter and sugar in it. So I'm just going to put the mixer to one side and stir in the flour. So I'm going to use my spatula for this simply because I have the spatula out but you can do this with a tablespoon and that's fine and you just need to stir the flour into the mixture until you have a nice even cake mixture and no signs of white flour around the outside of the bowl. And because this is a creamed cake that we're making it needs to be a soft dropping consistency which means when you pick some up on your spoon or your spatula, it should drop off quite easily like that. So I have the cake made and I've got my cake cases and now because it is small, I'm just going to use a teaspoon, pick up scoopfuls of the mixture with a teaspoon and put them on top of the jam. And when I put it on top of the jam, I'm going to just try and seal around the outside and seal the mixture to the pastry. That way I have less chance of the pastry bubbling up. It doesn't have to be a perfect seal because being a cake mixture, this will melt as soon as it goes into the oven but if I can see that the jam is over to one side in the bottom of the cake case then I will try and make sure that I seal it underneath my spoonful of cake mixture and you need to keep going until all of your jam, all of your little tarts are covered in cake mixture. Okay, so all the jam has been covered with the cake mix. 
and it doesn't matter that the top of these look uneven because as I've said the first thing that's going to happen when you put these into your hot oven is that the cake mix will melt and it will find its own level so you are wasting your time trying to get them perfectly smooth. These are going to go into an oven at 160 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay, the mini bake wells have come out of the oven. The pastry, where I can see it, has gone a light golden brown colour. The cake mixture has risen and if you touch it lightly on the surface, it springs back. If you've put too much jam in these, sometimes it's difficult to tell if your cake is cooked through because the jam underneath is wobbly. But if you just put in a thin layer, then it should be absolutely fine. And when these are a little bit cooler, these have literally just come out of the oven, but you should be able to lift your little bake wells out and underneath we should have perfectly cooked pastry. Okay, one of the last things that I meant to say about these um, was, there we go, this is the smaller one where I did the smaller cake case, smaller pastry case and you can see the cake mixture has bubbled up over the top of that whereas the slightly larger pastry case you can actually see a little bit of the pastry all the way around the cake mix which is what you would like with a bake well. With these mini ones I wouldn't normally bother to put icing on the top or a lattice, do that with a larger one and they could just have a light dusting of icing sugar over the top before serving.